G'day punters and welcome to another edition of Group One Guns. And with me, as always, Adam from the Race Club. Adam, welcome. Let's good to be here. Well, not there, but here at home. I didn't quite uh, make the haul. I made the flight, but I was cancelled. Cancelled on, so I'm stuck in the office today. Yeah. But still good to see your face. Now let's get into it. Concord Stakes for the sprinters over a thousand meters at Ramming. It's a Group Three for three year olds and above. Well, this is the first step towards the Everest. No nature strip. But the old sparring partner, Eduardo, is the favourite. So, look, Ads, he's, he would be the second best sprinter in Australia, if not the world. Can you see? Can you see anything upsetting him here? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a hard one because I think he, he hasn't trialled any uh, better or any worse. He's just, uh, gone around in his two trials leading in, and even under with the set weights and penalties, he's he's still the the clear class. He's got figures. Above all of these, I probably guess the only thing is how much pepper does he cop from Malkovich, who's been really pushed out at the trials and runs some time from the front. Um, but Malkovich's query is going to be the going, I think, uh, clearly a better horse on top of the ground. So it, it just depends how, how much pressure there is up top. Ted Wado's chance, we know he can absorb it um, and he, he's a great fresh horse. So I think he's definitely the horse to beat. The one I think is the up and coming is Andermatt. And the trial of Andermatt with just the 12 weeks uh, since last prep was really, really good and really knuckled down late and quick. And that was probably the best I've seen Andermatt trial leading in. And I, I think he's still got a bit to come. So I'm not going to back Eduardo at the odds. Just There's just enough query with me with Malkovich. I think he's wound up, ready to go, and I think they're going to really pour it on. Um, so I'm going to say Andermatt can just sit off them and get last crack. So... My full hundred is going on Andermatt with Cummings having a pretty full hand here. Um, I think one of those is it's going to be, and Andermatt's the one I'm going with. All right, Andermatt. Well, I'm going the old boy. I'm going 100 on the nose, Eduardo. Uh, I just think he's unbeaten over this uh, distance here in, in Randwick, and when he has raced against Nature Strip, he's beaten him every time. So $100 on the nose for me. Uh, let's go to the tramway stakes over 1,400 metres. Now, another – well, this is a group two for three-year-olds and above. Look, Zaki, this is where he starts, the obviously, the campaign towards the Cox Plate. He's had a couple of trials and has opened uh, as odds-on favourite and with only 59 kilos gets in pretty well. Profondo and Converge are ne- next best on the line. What do you what do you think? I know you were quite uh, pleased with Profondo in, in the wink stakes. Adam, are you going to take Zaki on here? Yeah, I reckon you've uh, stolen my thunder there. I think uh, I, I really like Zaki and I've always been, yeah, a big fan. Uh, and and nothing wrong with the trials. It probably comp- complete stupidity to bet against him. But I am sold on Profondo. I still mm. think, as I mentioned last time, that X factor and, and a bit of unknown and the ceiling, we still don't know because he, he's still doing a little bit wrong. And there's a lot of merit in that. Given Animo came up the inside, they were sort of, Side by side, same position in running um, in the wink stakes when they both resumed. And Profondo has come out deep, over raced a little bit when Hilao slackened the tempo and still had the audacity to to give a kick. Um, and Animo got the softer run and come to the inside. I, I don't think Profondo beats Animo in that, although prior to the race, I did think Profondo had trialed better. But I'm going to stick with that. I think the market's probably framed it to that uh, last prep flop where he just did nothing. And I guess that uncertainty. So they're keeping him sort of safe a little bit, but they're not really um, giving him the respect I think he deserves. So Profondo, you've got each way odds. You're getting a place price the same as Zaki win price. Profondo sets up better. I'd love to see a positive ride. 1,400 metres again, perfect, rather than stepping up in trip. Probably the edge off now, and and maybe that tractability might be just enough, and I think Profondo each way bet for me. So if I was to play this, I think 30 by 70, $30 a win, seven in a place and get a result out of the race. All right. I'm going to follow you in. I'm going to 50 on Profondo as well and 50 on Nimalee for a place at about $5. Oh, so I, like I know that. it wasn't a, wasn't a great run last start, <laughs> but um, 50 the place on Nimalee. All right, let's go to the last one. Chelmsford Stakes over 1,600 metres, group two way for age. Look, it's shaping up as a pretty competitive race. Proven horses like Montefilia, Mwanga, Shawfire up against like a couple of uh, up-and-coming runners, Benno to to be exact. As last time in the Wink Stakes, we backed Mwanga. 
Do you think? I mean, ran a uh, ran a good last, so that was um, <laughs> look. It was disappointing. Do you think he can he can bounce back? No, I don't, and I don't. No. I don't really cop Barry's comments about after he said he, you know, he was a bit stuck in trapping, didn't get a chance to build into the race, which was, you know, the the stewards queried the run in the end, and it, it, Barry was into Mwanga pretty early, and I don't think he's getting much of a response there. And if you want to look at jockey sentiment, he's hopped off of Mwanga with the stable mate Numeri, and he has trialled up quite well. Um, so uh, for me, out of the nation pair, I'd be on Numeri, and I'm a bit disappointed in Mwanga. I thought the trials were quite soft and they were ready for first up tilt. You and I were both quite keen and we need to get on the board in the group one gun. So hopefully we can do it out of these three races. But I'm going to go with um, Benoid. Oh, I guess that's how we say it. Benoid, Benoid. I think he, Beno? he was Beno, Richie. No, kind of I, I think he was he was clearly, he, I mean, he's um, a derby runner up. And he's gone around 80, 80 to 1 in the wing stakes. I thought that was ridiculous. I thought he was forward enough. The yard sort of backed it up for us. Um, the TRC yard boys said he's quite ready to go. And and I really like now stepping up the trip, stepping up in trip, and probably gets a better race. Yeah, he was quite forward in running from what I expected first up. And he he was still coming late. And I, I'm I'm pretty happy with Benoit here. I think it's Montefilia. Maybe the mile was a little bit sharp. I'm, I'm not. 100% sold. The trials are fine. Can't really pot it. Um, and again, Moanga, I'm just, I'm off it now. It's dummy. You can't run last. You can't tip something and then run last <laughs> and back it up, I don't think. So it's not I'm going to go with Beno. And I think he's oh, around that 9 $10 mark. I reckon he's a good each way bet. So 50 each way on Beno for me. Ads, uh, we are very much in sync today because I've gone 50 each it. way on my notes as well, just to prove <laughs> to, our, uh, to our boss here. Do you think the 1600 might be a bit short? I think so, but given how forward he was in that first up run, uh, he was probably more forward than I anticipated. I thought he was going to get back and really flatten out and be that eye-catching run. still think he did that, but he was more forward in running. So I think he's still got that freshness in him, and the mile now is probably the perfect step up. And whatever he does, he's going to improve on as he gets out and trip. But I think right now the mile seems to suit. Oh, I reckon I'm confident he'll go well. We've got the wizard on board too. He might pull something out of his hat. The whiz. I reckon that's a big upgrade, you know. Mm. He gets the outside, can build into the run. Reese Jones, no knock on him. He, he didn't ride anything bad there, but I just think the whiz, the wizard from the West. Let's get the wizard on because you're right. We've got to get on the board. We've got to we get do. on the board. We can't keep – well, I mean, being around the mark, but that doesn't count for the doesn't, scoreboard. Doesn't, no. No, no prize for second. Board. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Comps that one in March, all that sort of jazz. <laughs> Anyway, ads, last. ads, I've missed your beautiful face and your beautiful hair live in studio, but you still look very dapper through the Zoom. Very Yeah, dapper. I know. I think I said to you just before that I think the light's really giving it a good good little tint there. It's, <laughs> I, you were saying uh, pain like before, which I, I'll take as a compliment. Yeah, I'm Tim happy Payne, with that. Cross between Tim Payne and Chris Isaac. Just keep your uh, <laughs> pants on. All right, mate. Well, uh, best of luck on Saturday. Uh, best of luck to the punters. Uh, gamble responsibly, and we'll see you next week.